Esky fans, and welcome to another Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. I'm Corey LaRange. And I'm Meg Morrison, and it's hot out here. <laughs> yeah. You can tell it's the start of a football season with temperatures like these. Unfortunately for the Eskimos, they weren't quite this hot when they faced the Rough Riders last weekend. No, unfortunately the Eskimo offense is still coming together, but on the bright side, the uh, defense had another stellar showing. So at least that's good, and once the offense comes in sync, I think we're going to look pretty good. Always finding the positive, I like that. <laughs> it's just my point of view. <laughs> Speaking of, our next segment is called Point of View, and we're going to follow running back Hugh Charles through practice. Day three is uh, more of a, a, a polished day uh, going into uh, game week. And uh, today we just uh, made sure we had our assignments right. Hello. We started with uh, you know just regular quarterback handoffs with the running backs, uh, getting uh, familiar uh, with uh, our steps uh, on different run plays. And then uh, we went into an inside run. That's more for us running backs and the whole line to get to their blocks and to execute our run plays. Mainly focused on knowing where the hole is gonna hit, and that's by knowing where my linemen are gonna go for each each and every play. Um, there's, a, there's a certain blocking assignment each lineman has. They might be pulling, they might just be going straight off the line, and I've got to react to that and uh, knowing where the hole is gonna hit. Um, and then we went into team or Skelly, that was just an all around us for our receivers, O-line, quarterbacks and running backs. We run different plays, we might have a run play in there, we might have a, a receiving play in there, pass plays, we may not even get the ball, but we want to check our, our blocking assignments and then uh, we want to get out. And I was one of the three guys back there during kickoff, you guys can see the people rushing down. But it's just to make sure everybody's in their lanes uh, for the kickoff. And then when we get to kickoff return, we know we got to get the wedge set and make sure everybody's in their, in their position so uh, they can make their blocks. There was another period in there where we had blitz. Uh, blitz period is real important because a lot of teams like the blitz, the O-line and the running backs uh, got to be on the same page because we have specific calls. If we have more than four guys, more than seven guys on the line, we all have to be on the same page. And so um, that's an uh, intricate part of an offense is really picking up blitzes because it's going to give more time to the quarterback. Each and every game I, I come in with, with the goal in mind of how many yards I want to rush for, how many, uh, I don't want to drop any passes um, and, and so forth. And each play I come to the line, I want to know my assignment uh, for one. I, I scan the field, scan the defense to see how many guys are up, uh, how many guys are back, and then I want to execute my assignment. When it comes to the run play, um, it, it's big for me. You know, whenever my mind starts, my mind hears that run play from the quarterback, start, you know, your feet get a little giddy. Um, but you just want to go back to what we have practiced, and you want to calm those nerves down. You know, I just want to hit the hole and, and hit it fast and, and break a big one open. You know, only once in my short football career did I have to return punts in a game, and um, in football terms, I've always been considered a bit of a small guy. You? <laughs> yeah. Really? Hard oh, to believe, huh? Football terms. <laughs> Anyways, reliving the moments through Charles's helmet cam have reminded me that uh, I've chosen the right career path. Most likely, yes. <laughs> now, the Eskimos over the offseason got a whole bunch of brand new faces brought in, but it wasn't just them. The cheer team was revamped as well. A couple weeks back, we were on hand at the cheer team unveiling, and we caught up with rookie Jackie, who enjoys long drives on the prairies. Hi, I'm Jackie, and it's my first year with Eskimo cheer team. I go to school during the year, so I'm just on my summer break right now. So I am actually working in Lloydminster, and I commute up to Edmonton for games and practices. Coming from a smaller community, it's it was good to grow up in Lloyd because it uh, allowed me to be, you know, more engaged with um, my family. And growing up in high school, because you know your graduating classes, you know, no more than a hundred people. You know, you really get to know the people that you go to school with, and you really get to know um, your whole high school in general. So it was really good growing up in a smaller kind of town. In that aspect, is that um, you know you really get to know everybody growing up through those formative years. I had started on the U of A dance team and a couple of the girls on the U of A team like Victoria tried out, I think it was two years ago, and um, 
she had nothing but great things to say about it and it was you know coming on to the Eskimos it's such you know a community and so she really encouraged me to kind of uh, join the team and try out and it was really it was nerve-wracking but it was really exciting at the same time and that you know this new experience with all these people that you know everyone would come in with a huge smile on their face and it was just it was great to be a part of that. Coming from a smaller community, I do like to think, you know, more family kind of orientated. And I think the Eskimos, the structure of the organization, even, you know, from the football team to the cheer team and the greater everyone else incorporated in it is just one big family. And that kind of mentality and that uh, structure, I think, disseminates from, you know, your family to, to the Eskimos. It's great that we can come out to the community and spread that kind of feeling towards everyone else. Today is our unveiling party. For the past couple weeks we've been preparing routines. The crowd gets introduced to the members of the team. You know, it's it's the chance for um, the community to first meet the team as, as a group. We've done promos so far, but it's not really been the formality of introducing everybody like this, this unveiling today is. It was a long process, <laughs> let me tell you that. We usually practice twice a week, sometimes three. This past week leading up to uh, the unveiling that we're having here tonight has been especially busy. We've been practicing you know, Wednesday and we had Tuesday and then we had junior esques and mini esques on Monday and practice past Sunday as well. So it's it's pretty long process, but it's all worth it in the end when you when you get to come out and kind of you know perform for the crowd. I feel good. We've really prepared, so I feel like it's going to go well. I'm also nervous, but but I think it will go well. The Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show will be back after this. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Most people know Stephen Giles as a quarterback in the CFL. What most people don't know is that he actually grew up in construction and he still helps out his dad's construction company from time to time. Yeah, so today we're going to learn a little bit more about Giles and his construction background as he stopped in to lend a hand for a great charity in Habitat for Humanity. Well, my dad is a carpenter by trade. Um, he's been doing it forever. So growing up in his household, he had to work. Um, he brought me into it at the age of 10. You know, it started off by getting wrenches for him or tools for him. And um, then they started glue, glue this pipe together or um, put the door on his cabinet. Um, so it kind of escalated from there. Um, I did it for a couple years until I attended college. Um, I wanted to go into architect drafting, but we didn't have a program in my university. So um, they had a construction management program. So I was like, hey, I kind of know a little bit about carpentry. This should be a pretty easy degree. It wasn't. <laughs> um, but I was pretty good at math. So um, it was something I enjoyed. And when I had a chance to work on projects and follow the, the general contractor and see the thing that he did, you're more of a leader than a worker. So um, I kind of enjoyed the construction management. Well, one of my interns to construct a three-story house. Um, so I kind of follow the guy around and hands-on a little as far as framing and putting up boards, just an extra set of hands, but um, watch the way they construct the house. And then go home during the summertime and work with my dad a little to gain a little more experience because if I was forced to do construction management, I wanted to be one of the general contractors who got out and worked with his guys and show the guys that you appreciate them and you will work just as hard as they do. I, we got along very well because I was a guy who, um, a leader, um, hard worker, and it was a little, it took a lot off him because he can actually come to a, a job and say, here, this is the plan, this is what we're going to do, and he'll just leave. <laughs> so I'm there trying to keep everything going until he get back and he'll go start on something else, and um, then once we finish this, we'll go to another project. And, uh, we work pretty well together. We're, we're two of a kind. We're perfectionists, and um, he knew that I was going to do it right. If not, I'll wait until he get back. <laughs> um, but it was exciting. I enjoy working with him. Uh, I kind of miss it now. I go home for a little while. I look forward to working with him. It's hard to go into it, and you you only can work for a certain time of the year. Um, you can be a, hel a helper, but it's hard to do the actual construction management. They're looking for guys to work full time and who's going to be around um, for for a good little while, so it was a bit hard, but I try to go to projects similar to this and just follow around and just watch and observe what the guys are doing. Well, Habitat for Humanity is an international organization. We're in over 100 countries all 
all over the world, uh, from El Salvador, Honduras, to Poland, to New Zealand, to, uh, to Canada. And in Canada, actually, there are 72 different affiliates. And we're proud that actually Habitat for Humanity Edmonton is the largest Canadian affiliate. And what we do is we build homes and hope for families. We uh, Families that are struggling and paying too much rent and getting out of their rut from living from pay period to pay period, we sell them a house. And we sell them the house uh, at market value but at zero percent interest. We change people's lives because of that. And the other neat thing about Habitat for Humanity is that we build our homes with volunteers. In Edmonton last year, we had over 11,000 volunteer shifts. So we're very, very much part of building community and uh, proud of what we do for families and proud of what we do for the community. Well, this is a wonderful build site for us. It's actually the largest uh, build site uh, of its kind in Canada. All these homes, all 47 homes are within the built green jurisdiction. And so they're all special environmentally built homes. This land was donated by Canon Margaret Anderson, and that's why we call it Anderson Gardens. And we, we believe, you know, we're the city of champions, not just because we have good sporting teams, but because of the spirit of Edmontonians. And to get the number of people that we get to volunteer here every day, day in and day out, is what makes Habitat for Humanity, I think, be able to build more homes than any, any place else. This is amazing and I mean, I was just stung for a second, made me want to join and help out. Um, but this, this is huge and, and I admire it and, and I, I, mean, I look forward to looking into it. Um, I'm kind of interested in researching a little bit and, and looking into it and while I'm here in Edmonton, if I have time, you know, try to come out and, and visit and um, see if I can help out with them. It's always awesome to see all these athletes do so well in their community and make sure that you watch next week when we test out Giles' carpentry skills for Habitat for Humanity. Now, every week, Corey and I are outfitted in some sweet Eskimos gear and you can see we're up in the store now and I'm talking to Kylie Quinn about all the new things that we have. One thing that uh, has just been flying off the shelves are the new Eskimos jerseys. Yeah, we've uh, released our new jerseys this May, and they've been really popular, especially the away jersey with the white and the green sleeves. So we're very excited for fans to purchase those and support the team. I'm really pumped up about all the new women's clothing that you have here, especially because I get to wear a new thing every week, and I have quite the retro jersey on today. Talk about all the new women things that you have. Yeah, there's so many female fans in the Eskimo fan base, so it's wonderful that our merchandise is now in-house, and we have that option to specifically cater to women who want to have some nice uh, pieces that fit them well. That is one thing that I really like is that everything is fitted this year and you can see the t-shirts down here. They're very shapely and one thing that I had on last week was uh, it, it looked like a cheerleader outfit and it's just right up here behind me. What is the deal with, I believe First Star has it, the contract this year for all the women's clothing and the cheer team? Yes, um, First Star is actually an official sponsor of the cheer team. So the products you see the cheer team in, you can buy exclusively here at the fan shop and whatever the cheerleaders are wearing, you can buy too. Very cool. The guys stuff is very chic this year as well. Talk about all the different options for guys. Mm -hmm. We've got everything from the authentic sideline gear that you see the coaches in. We've got some great hoodies, some nice casual pieces. So there's a lot of options for everybody. Now, if you don't want to necessarily come down to the store, you can't make it down. There are other options for where you can buy this stuff, right? Yes, uh, you can visit shop.esks.com and you can purchase everything online that you see in the store. Now, I think there's one other piece that we have to talk about and it's the kids clothing. So I'll get you to hold the mic for a sec. And believe it or not, you can actually get this small of a jersey that fits a <laughs> six month old if you come down to the Eskimo store. Yes, so cute. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this, Kylie, and uh, make sure you stick around. There's more of the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show after this. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Now, last week, Rashad Genty spoke with Eskimo rookie Justin Capicotti about his first game in the CFL. This week, he's talking to Almondo Sewell about his return to the Eskimos and being the team leader in sacks. 
Thank you guys for joining me on another episode of 55 Seconds with Gent. Today, my lucky guest is Armando Sewell. Now, Armando, can you please pronounce your name for everyone out there? I mean, you could just call me Mondo Sewell. Mondo Sewell, sound good. Mondo Sewell. Now, Mondo, you were an interesting story. Last year, you was released by the team, and this year, you are now made the team and actually leading the league in sacks. Can you speak a little bit about that? I mean, this is a good opportunity that I'm back up here. You know, um, last year it was like a, it was like a business type thing that went on. You know, I'm. Coach Cave has explained it to me. I don't have no hard feelings about it, but you know, I went back home, played arena football for the Gladiators. Thanks to Coach Tun. Shout out to him. Really appreciate everything he did for me, and um, I'm back up here now. You know, making the best of my opportunities. Now being released. Now I, I obviously, you know, been a part of being released, and you know, this kind of a challenge. How did you deal with that? I mean, it was it was hard. You know, like it was my first opportunity. You know, but I'm glad I went through that whole stage of it. No, I know that was just business side. Now I'm back again. I'm playing, playing good. You know, so. What type of advice can you give to anyone out there as far as you know going through adversity, as far as being released, not knowing, not having a job for you know some time, and now being back on the team and leading the league in the sacks? Now that's a big thing. Can you give any advice to anyone out there? You know, uh, being through that situation or going through some type of adversity. If you got a dream, keep following it. And that was my dream. I kept on following it. I wasn't going to give up until the, the end of it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your CFL sack leader, Armando Sewell. Thanks for joining us with 55 Seconds with Gent. Hit me up on Twitter, at Rashad Genty. And shout out to my whole D-line. Shout out to the D-line. <laughs> we out. Peace. <laughs>
but there's just one that we haven't gotten to yet. Earlier this season at Fan Day, we set up our tents and our cameras and tested your Eskimo knowledge. We had a ton of fun with everyone that was there and we gave away some wonderful prizes. So first up, we're going to show you a father-son duo going up against each other. You think you can beat your dad at Eskimo knowledge? Well, with age comes wisdom, right? <laughs> I guess so. There you go. That's a good answer. <laughs> Check it out. Welcome to an all new segment of Fan vs. Fan. I'm Dana Giesbrecht and we have two contestants on today's show, a father and son duo. So please introduce yourselves. I'm Ryan. Ryan and little... I'm Riley. Riley, how old are you? Nine. We're nine. Come a little closer to me, bud. There we go. We're going to be nice and snug. It's a windy day here at the Clark Stadium. We have four questions for you guys and then a tiebreaker run. There will be very easy questions. Riley, I might help you out a little bit, but the... The thing to remember is that you only answer your question, Ryan. And Riley, don't help your dad out. Just answer your question. So are you guys ready to go? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so Ryan, first question for you. How many Grey Cups have the Eskimos won? Uh, 13. Good job. Ding, 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 ding. Well, you looked at my jersey. You looked at your jersey? My dad did. Oh, okay. So we have, it's okay. It's, it's, it's time for your question. Are you ready? Come on a closer, little bud. Now, where did the Eskimos get the green and gold colors from? It's a local university. And it starts with the same letter as the province, which is, might also be the same name. Alberta. Good job. OK, so a little help for the little one. And remember, we are competing today for a pretty sweet prize. And you guys will also get a participation prize as well. So next question. For Ryan, how many times have the Eskimos and Montreal faced off in the Grey Cup? Uh, four times. You want to help him out with that one? What do you think? Mm, I think it will be around three. Oh, you guys are both wrong. Eleven. Much, much, much more than you think it would be. Okay, so Riley, you've got one. Your dad's got one. Let's see if you can uh, get this next one for you. What year were the Eskimos founded? Any guess? 1937. Do you want to try one more time? 1949. Yeah! Hey, high five, bud! You really thought, thought they uh, won the Great Cup. Oh. That's what I thought. Well, you, okay, so now we have beautiful Rose that's going to bring in our iPad for the tiebreaker round. Now, this is super fun. What we're going to do with this, guys, is there's a player that's going to appear very slowly, and as he comes into form, the first person to tell me who it is is the winner. So we got 10 seconds left, nine, eight. He's starting to get a little clearer. Five, four, three, two, who knows? Damon Allen. Well, that's okay because guess what? We're gonna give you some hats and some tickets anyways. Rose, I'll take these. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thank you, Thank you very much, Riley. Good job, guys. Thanks for being contestants on Fan versus Fan. Well, that does it for another edition of the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Good job, Meg. Good job, buddy. Make sure to check us out, as always, next Wednesday night, 7 p.m. on Shaw TV Channel 10 or online on esks.com or shawtv.ca. And make sure to visit our Facebook page or our Twitter at The Gridiron Show. Now, things didn't fare so well for the Eskimos last weekend when they faced the Rough Riders. This weekend, we're at home in our building against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers this Friday, July 13th at 7 o'clock. Show your green and gold to the core by packing Commonwealth Stadium. Yeah, and as always, if you can't make it to the stadium, Make sure to check out the Voice of the Eskimos 630 Ched or check out your Shaw HD listings. All right, Meg, that is it for our show, but week one, we challenged each other to a 40-yard 40, 40 dash. You cheated. Week two, you cheated again. Today, I'm going to bring in producer John Barada, who's going to do the official start. Keep your eyes on this lady. Make sure she's not cheating. We're going to start on the same line. I don't have any cleats or anything. This I'll even I let you go cheat. barefoot okay. there, uh, yeah, golf fan. Yeah, I have fan. to. Okay. Oh, you're gonna is do this the, how we do this? Okay, you're gonna do the sprinter thing. Yeah. All right. Is this on how we do this? Okay. Your your thumb is on the line there. Back, Sorry. Back a little bit. Sorry. There you go. Kay. All right. I'm you ready? ready. Oh. Ah, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, That's I see how it is. That's what I'm talking about. Mark, set, go. Oh, 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 you cheater. The Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show is brought to you by Carl Hager Lemon Brace, custom designed braces and foot orthotics manufactured in Edmonton.
Armando. Armando. Armando, man. You know That's what, what I'm saying? Man. That's what I'm saying. Oh, Armando. Why did you say that? Yeah, I did say that. This week, he's going to talk to Armando. Armando Silva. We're just an awesome pair today. Uh, <laughs> and we caught up with Jackie, who's a rookie. <laughs> she likes long drives on the prairies. Yep. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to go, <laughs> and I just combined all my words into one. Maybe you can do subtitles. <laughs> yeah, so uh, make sure to, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, you boy. You boy. Yeah, so we're today we're uh, here, here. Sorry. Failed it. Uh, <laughs> my turn. <laughs>